Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And yes, I installed Windows 11 onto my Android phone. So let's check it out. Now this project has been something I wanted to do for months now. I could even show you when I started collecting notes for this, which is in my snippet box. And this, like I said, something I wanted to do because I thought it was pretty impressive, including the fact that drivers work on here so you can actually get GPU acceleration. But yeah, definitely something worth looking into if you got an older Snapdragon phone. Now I'm actually installing this into a OnePlus 6 and there's a lot of guides out there for OnePlus 6Ts and a lot of other phones. But I gotta say, I'm very versed in Android operating system as well as Linux and as well as Windows, but even following guides that are online are not necessarily straightforward. You do need a good understanding of each operating system and how partitions work and how you need to split certain things up. And since I've installed Windows on Raspberry Pi before, quite a few times before the installers were even made, I'm also a little familiar with DISM++, which is something you also need to install this operating system. Now I'm not gonna actually put the install video into this video because if I do, it's gonna take a very long time, but I will leave you a guide to a link in the description below to what I followed step-by-step -step almost to get this into my phone. To show you on my desktop real quick, one of the main guides that I follow is from XDA and this guide is basically in Chinese. Um, they do have an English tutorial, but it's very blurry and it's very hard to understand. But if you read down this forum, there's actually a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. Now this first one that you see on page one, while this is a pretty good step-by-step, -step, it's missing a few steps to get the whole uh, Windows 11 installed properly. So I would avoid this one and jump to page two. If you scroll down a little bit more, you will actually see a much better guide from, um, let me see what's his name, uh, Wrathchild08. He goes through step-by-step -step, all in English, uh, kind of breaks it down on what each command does, how it works. And this does help a lot, especially if you un are not too familiar with the operating system, but more so if you are familiar with it, it's a lot easier and a lot smoother going through the process. I would definitely take this tutorial into account because it's especially made for this phone, but I realize as you're reading through the guide, it does work for other phones as well. Now going to support what phone does work. Uh, Renegade is the project master, you could say, that's putting Windows on these phone devices. And they have a list of what CPUs work. They have the Snapdragon CPUs like this, and then they'll kind of tell you what device works, what is properly working with them, and so forth and so forth. Now, there are older devices, they're called legacy support, which is for me, um, that will show you a new set of devices, what they support. And obviously my OnePlus 6 is in this list, that's why it works, but they do have a bunch of other older devices here. So if you have a device that fits in this category, you can absolutely install Windows 11 or Windows 10 onto your phone and get it to the state that I am at right now. But I do gotta say, I am extremely impressed on the performance and how everything works and reacts. There are a lot of things that don't work. You're gonna have to read through the list, like audio for this phone, especially, and the sensors for rotation, the camera doesn't work. There's a quite a few things that don't work. Some people say that this graphic driver was a little glitchy. I haven't noticed that yet. There's also that point where it might just not wanna run a game or two. Now, why am I interested in installing Windows 11 onto my phone? One, because it's fun. Uh, two, Windows 11 on ARM came a long way from being just a shell of an operating system to now fully functional. I do run a Windows on ARM device and I've been using that straight for two months and I've gotten almost everything that I want works. I say almost because there are a few things that doesn't work on that device, which bothers me, but ultimately it has become a really good operating system. So we're gonna jump into it and check it out right now. Now, one of the things you must have is a USB hub. I have a USB-C hub with storage built in. That's how I'm using it to transfer all the files. Just for your convenience on the installation part, some sort of USB uh, keyboard and mouse. Now I'm gonna plug this whole thing in. I do have my camera facing the screen itself. I don't have any sort of mirroring option right now. So I'm hoping I could capture this as much as I can, but it's really, really impressive. Now touchscreen does work. I'm able to press the start. Now, obviously because Windows 11 also has a tablet mode, you can switch it to tablet mode, but without the ability to have the sensor auto rotate, it kind of defeats that purpose. So if you do want to use it in that mode, you can. I'm gonna show you just a few things like running edge. I'm gonna move my mouse over to the top left. It starts up right away. And you could see YouTube Nova Spirit Tech. And that loads almost since I don't know why I Googled it, but that loads almost instantly and brings me right to my video. 
Wow, I didn't know Bing just steals or hijacks the videos like that. I thought it would bring me to YouTube.com. I guess it didn't, but it's very, very responsive in just loading stuff. Full screen works. Uh, I could scroll up and down. That's my latest short videos. I'm trying to come out with more short videos for you guys as well. But yeah, it's smooth. Just scrolling up and down, jumping into my latest video, skipping this ad, full screen. It's very, very impressive. Now, one thing that doesn't work on this is the audio. So what you can hook up is Bluetooth headphones, Bluetooth sound card, or a USB sound card just to get the audio out, but the onboard audio does not work. Now, because Windows 11 supports Windows on Windows, which allows you to run x86 or 64-bit applications, a lot of stuff works as well. Now, one of the things I do wanna show you guys is Crisis. <laughs> can it run Crisis? And the answer is, yes, it can. It can absolutely run Crisis. Now, do you, I guess this might be one of those graphical glitches that you guys are talking about because when I have it in full, full screen, dedicated full screen mode or exclusive full screen mode, the mouse does not appear on the actual game itself. So I do have to run it in a full screen window mode. And because Crisis is such old game, their full screen window mode still has the window start menu stuck in between. I'm gonna to try to see if I can skip through these menus real quick. Let me load the game. And there we go. The game does load. It's a little slow on here. It's running, I think, about 16 frames per second. I don't have the thing pulled up, but it's about 16 frames per second. I could shoot stuff, walk around, you see the water. And I left the details on, I think, medium. I did not change it to low or anything, but it's very, very impressive. I'm playing it live as we go right now. I'm not doing anything much, but I just wanted to show you that this game does load and it is able to run. Now I'm gonna run myself right here. Look at this. It's not bad at all. I'm so impressed with this. Now this isn't one of the things that I was super impressed about because this is a very old title, but I was actually able to run a newer game and it ran, I think, even smoother than this. So I'm, I'm gonna get out of this, but I just wanted to show you, yes, it can play Crisis. Now the next game that I want to show you guys was Tomb Raider. This was one of those things that I was so impressed that it will actually play in a decent frame rate. And here we go, this is the main menu. It looks extremely clear. Uh, the menus go by pretty quick. If I go into options, it'll bring me right into options, get back out of there. I'm gonna load the game that I was currently playing before, which is probably this one, I think. And that's Tomb Raider. This is me just moving around. Look at that. So impressive for a little tiny Snapdragon 845 to be able to play games like this. And I'm using native res resolution. This is on 2160 by 1080, I think. I'll pull up the resolutions on screen right here, but look at that. It's playing Tomb Raider. It's, it is absolutely playable like this, right? You see this? Water. She's just running around. This is full screen. It's not choppy. So I thought this was like extremely impressive to be able to play a game just like this. And this is much newer, I think 2015, uh, compared to Crisis. Obviously it comes down to optimization because this game's a little bit more optimized, but yeah, it, it works very, very well. I'm gonna quit this as well now. now I'm gonna show you some on-screen stats real quick. Uh, heading over to Device Manager, you're gonna see that there are still a bunch of stuff that don't have drivers for. Uh, like I said, the sensors don't work, cameras don't work. You're gonna see a lot of unknown devices on the top left. So yeah, you're not gonna be able to get those installed because they just don't have drivers for them. So that's a little bit of a bummer. But otherwise, uh, let me show you Task Manager. And in here, you can go into performance and you can see I got eight cores and it's just chilling. It's not doing anything crazy. It's not struggling. It's just running the operating system. This um, phone also has eight gigs of RAM and it's only using about, well, I loaded a bunch of stuff, so it's 3.1 and I might have, I think it's gonna just stay in there. Uh, we do have the GPU, which is the 630 GPU and Wi-Fi does work off the bat too. 
All in all, I thought this was extremely fun. What I was more interested about was actually getting this to be plugged into somewhere hidden and use this as an extra computer because you can actually install Windows Pro on here, enable remote desktop, and then you can actually remote into the phone and use it re like a regular desktop PC. And you've seen just browsing the web and the performance of it being able to play games. This is actually a very comfortable PC to be able to remote into and do some office work, especially on such a small form factor. But you do got to keep in mind that this particular phone does get a little bit warm when you're charging it at the same time you're using the GPU and the CPU. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I was thoroughly impressed with the performance and the speed and being able to play games and what it can run with this. So I've, I'm actually at all on playing with this phone. I'm gonna be keeping this around for probably a week or two just to play around with it in a remote desktop environment. But more videos to come on mobile operating system softwares for phones like this. Now, I'm just discovering that the OnePlus 6 is a really good contender to be testing out mobile operating system like Mobian, uh, Plasma, Mobile, or a bunch of other mobile operating system that I've been playing around with. So in the next couple of months, I will be loading different types of mobile operating system into this phone just to see how it works. Well, that is it for me. If you guys have any questions, just hit me up down in the comments below or on my Discord. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.